Are you guys tired of the color screen on your Ender 7? Well, we've got a kit for you that gets rid of it and puts the good old 12864 on there so you can have full control over your machine. I'm going to show you how to install it right now. Like many of our other LCD kits that we come out with to replace these touch screens, this one is basically the same except there's one additional step since Creality did not put the LCD header on the board. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to solder the LCD header on and it's fairly simple if you've soldered any sort of wires in the past, but if you're not comfortable soldering the header, we do have an upgrade option when you order the kit that is a $20 upcharge where you can send us your board and we'll place the order on hold. I will personally solder the header onto your board and send your board back out with your LCD kit. Other than that, the installation is very straightforward. We're going to go ahead and put the header on the board, remove the stock LCD, assemble the new LCD housing, install the new LCD onto the printer, and then update the firmware. After that, you're going to be running our Unified 2 firmware, which is built on Marlin, so you'll have full access to all your printer settings and the source code. One thing to mention is Creality, as of making this video, still has not released a source code for this printer. So if you want to customize your printer, whether it's changing e-steps, motor directions, thermistor settings, this is basically your only option. Now that may change as this video gets outdated, but as of right now, there is no source code for this printer. So this will allow you to have full control of your printer and give you full source code so you can modify the printer as you see fit. So let's get to the installation procedure and I'll show you what to do step by step. So before you start the upgrade, make sure you have all the parts. You will have three pieces for the LCD housing. You will have the bag of screws, the LCD, which does include short cables, but these will not be used. You use this instead of the included cables to attach the LCD to the control board. The LCD will come in a static bag. We're going to go ahead and take this out of here once we're ready to mount it inside the case. And then we have the knob to actually go onto the LCD's encoder wheel. So the first thing you're gonna do is make sure your printer is unplugged. Also unplug the bed from the back of the base so we don't damage it. As you can see here, the bed, when it's plugged in, protrudes out the back. We wanna disconnect this. So go ahead and disconnect your bed before you get going. With the printer like this, go ahead and carefully tip it up onto its back. With the printer on its back, we want to go ahead and use a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench and take all the screws out of the bottom panel. You're not going to take the feet off, just the screws holding this panel in place. Once all the screws are removed, go ahead and take the bottom panel off. So the next part we need to do is actually get to the control board so we can attach the new LCD header. You can see I already have it installed because I did this previously, but we're gonna go ahead and cut to that video recorded of soldering this onto your board. If for some reason you do not wanna solder this, we do have an option on our LCD kit page where you can pay a $20 charge and send us your board. We will solder this and send it back with the kit. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the control board. Luckily, everything is labeled, but I recommend you take a picture of this before you disconnect it. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all these to get this board out so we can solder the header on to the LCD header position right here. Now, if you notice, some of these have hot glue on them. You can try to pick it off before you disconnect them, or if any headers come off, just push them back on. Now, one thing I will say is while you have these out, if you notice Creality here has done the improper thing, which is tinning the wires, snip these off and strip them and put bare wires back into the terminal. If you do have a crimp ferrule kit, put a crimp ferrule on these before you put them back into the socket here. If you don't get rid of this, you will risk burning up these terminals here over time. This is dangerous. 
And you can see they've also done it on the power input here. Same thing, snip these off, strip them, and either put bare wire back in here or put a crimp ferrule on here. If you guys do need crimp ferrules, we do carry them in our shop. So at this point, the board is ready to be taken out. We're gonna remove these screws that hold it in. There's four screws. There's one here, 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 and here that need to get taken out. And now we have the board out. We have the board removed from the printer. We have the header that is included with the kit. And this header needs to get installed in this location. Now, if you look on the board right here, it has a little silk screen mark to show where the tab cutout goes. And this header will follow that silk screen. So when we put this on, this has to go in the right direction, which is how I'm showing you right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into the socket here. And one thing I will recommend, just so this stays in place while we flip this over to solder, is put a little piece of tape over this to strap this down to the board. So that's held in place now. We can flip this over. If your tape's in the way like it is here, just peel it back. And now we need to carefully solder these 10 pins. Now this is a fairly easy solder job if you've soldered anything before. So I'm gonna zoom in and then solder these with my iron. I have my iron set at 350 degrees Celsius and I'm going to make sure to clean the tip off before I go ahead and solder this. And just like that we now have our header attached to the board. We'll go ahead and flip this over. Take the tape off and you can see now the header is firmly attached to the board and that's all there is to attaching this header so we can actually use the 12864 screen. The first step to installing the new LCD is we have to take this old one out. You're going to remove these four screws at the corners and disconnect this cable. Take the LCD out, make sure the little rubber gasket comes out with it. We can go ahead and disconnect this cable. And now we need to assemble a new LCD housing. So to assemble the new housing, we're gonna take the main piece here and four of the screws that are included. Take your LCD out of the package and we're going to insert this into the new housing. So the little encoder that sticks out here needs to go through the hole right here. And you're gonna put it in with the bottom first. And make sure the front line's up. And then we're going to put four screws into the LCD. You can see the screw holes in each corner. These are self-threading screws, so just take a Phillips and drive them into the part. Just double check that your LCD is still lined up in the front here. Once the LCD is installed, the LCD should fit perfectly in the window here as shown. Go ahead and put the encoder knob on the encoder post. It just lines up like this. Now we're going to attach the mounting bracket to the housing. Take four of the included screws. Each of the screws will go into these recessed holes here. So line it up and screw these in. Now go ahead and connect one end of the cable to the EXP3 header here. We're gonna use this header, not these two. So take the plug with the key portion up. You can see there's a key in the header there and plug this in.
Make sure that's in all the way. And now we're going to mount this up to the printer. Mount this up to the printer. We're going to need two more of the included screws and go ahead and pre-thread these into the mounting bracket. You can see there's a recessed hole. You put in the screw on this side, not the flat side. Take the LCD, feed the cable through the hole. And the LCD should fit just like this. You need to make sure that this hole is lined up with the metal bracket here, because when we put the bottom panel on, we're going to slide this under and then put the screw through here. If you want to make sure this hole is lined up, go ahead and put the screw in just to keep it aligned. You don't need to tighten it down, just leave it there. Take the retention bar, line these screws in the bar up with the holes on the screen here. And then tighten them down. And do not over tighten these, just snug them up. This is just going into a printed part. And then we have to connect the LCD cable to the header on the board here. Again, this cable does have a key on it, so match the key up with the one on the LCD header. And then you're going to want to take the extra cable and just stuff it into the LCD screen here. And now we put the cover back on. So remember to take this screw off that we use to align it up. And we're going to go ahead and put the cover back on in the same way we took it off. Slide this up underneath the LCD screen, push down right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this one in first. And now put the rest in. Go ahead and flip the printer back up. Reconnect your heated bed. And you can see here the LCD is now installed. This is nice and secure on the printer. I'm going to go ahead and do the most important part, which is peeling off the film. At this point, all we have left to do is update the firmware and we're ready to use the new kit. So to get the firmware, you can go to our website at support.th3dstudio.com or go to our main website and click Help Center at the top and just type Ender 7 Firmware. And you can see right here, Creality Ender 7 Firmware, and this will take you to the download page. Now, I'm not going to go over setting up Visual Studio Code. If you do need to get Visual Studio Code set up, you can see right here on one of the steps is set up Visual Studio Code first. You can click here and it'll take you to a link on how to set up Visual Studio Code. So all you need to do to download the firmware is click the download button. You need to accept the terms, hit download, and then it'll download the file to your computer. So go ahead and open this up and I'm going to go ahead and extract the firmware and we'll go ahead and put it in a folder called Ender 7 LCD update. You can put it in whatever you want. That's just where I'm extracting to it on my computer. And I like to copy this path. And then go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. Once it's open, click File, Open Folder. Paste in the path we copied earlier that we extracted to and double click the folder labeled Firmware and hit Select Folder. If you do not open it correctly, it will not be able to be compiled correctly. And all we have to do to set the firmware up for the Ender 7 with no other upgrades, just you have a stock Ender 7 and you're putting the LCD kit on, we go to Marlin, double click configuration.h, and all we do is uncomment Ender 7, and then we're going to go ahead and hit build. At this point, your computer is going to go ahead and compile the firmware. Once the compile is done, we're going to take the file it builds, put it onto an SD card, 
turn the printer on and it will flash the firmware. So I'm gonna let this build and I'll come back. Depending on the speed of your computer, it may take 10 seconds, it may take a couple minutes. Slower computers will take longer. So you can see here the firmware successfully compiled. To get to the actual firmware file, you can go to PIO, build, STM32 F103 RCT6 Creality, and then we can right click on this folder and hit reveal in File Explorer. I'm gonna go ahead and put the SD card into my card reader, and we wanna make sure that the SD card is formatted with a FAT32 file system, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on my SD card here, hit format, we want to set the allocation unit size to 4096 bytes. File system should be FAT32 and go ahead and format the drive. And now we're going to go ahead and copy the file. So if you have multiple bin files in the folder, you want to get whatever the latest date one is. You can see here I've only run one compile, so I only have one bin file. I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go back to my SD card here and paste this. So now the firmware file is on the SD card. I'm going to take the SD card out of my computer and we're gonna go ahead and put this into the printer's SD slot. When we turn this on, it will go ahead and update the firmware. So I'm gonna take the SD card and put it into the slot that's on the side of the printer here, and turn the printer on. It may take a couple seconds, but it'll go ahead and flash the firmware, and then you'll see the logo pop up on the LCD screen. So the first thing you should do is press the menu button, go to configuration, Go all the way down to reset EEPROM, hit init, and you'll hear a confirmation beep. And at this point, we're done. We can now print with this printer. The upgrade is complete. And just like that, we have the upgrade installed. I went ahead and ran a 200% Kelly Dragon print, and this is what came off the printer with just the LCD kit installed. There's no other tuning or modification done to the machine. So this printer does print really well. Um, I think the combination of the new firmware coupled with the ability to actually PID tune my hot end because the stock one was plus or minus two to three degrees, definitely improved the print quality a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kit. I know it took a while for us to come out with it. And I hope you guys enjoy having the flexibility to upgrade and modify your Ender 7 now. And as always, happy printing and thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate it.